chapter 5, starting from verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So we have access into his grace, his imputed, undeserved, merited favour. We have access to that, that free gift from God, through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we get access to that gift through Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 1, you know, being justified by faith. So we're justified just by trusting and following God. You know, Romans 1, it's the same message all the way throughout, but it's amazing how people don't understand it. You know, you just have to have faith in Jesus Christ, and he is your righteousness. He did all of the work. And in verse 3 it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So it's good to have tribulation and persecution because that develops us, it gives us experience and patience and actually the church grows with tribulation and uh, persecution and we see this all the time, it builds the church, church up but what's surprising is where the persecution is coming from because when you become a Christian you find that if you're from an unsafe family you get persecution from them and if you step out in faith you may find actually you're persecuted by the church hierarchy you know in um, persecution is a good thing because it develops character and it gives you patience but you need to remember that you're always following Jesus and you're to love all people and to carry that cross but that makes you a stronger Christian. You know, if life was just easy and um, we didn't have to worry and things were fine when we came to Jesus Christ, then, um, you know, we wouldn't develop. And we do need to develop because we're in, a, you know, we've got a lot of flesh to get rid of. We need to sacrifice ourselves daily and follow Jesus Christ. So persecution is a great thing and um, there's something for us to be, to rejoice in, you know, that we, we suffer um, you know we share in Christ's suffering in a part because we we trust and believe in him and Jesus said you know um, don't be uh, don't be um, <clears throat> don't be surprised if the world hates you because they hated me you know we're to remember that they hated Jesus first so when we profess him Lord of our lives and follow him then we're naturally going to um, be persecuted and face tribulation particularly as we develop and become more stronger as a Christian. In verse 7 it says, For scarcely uh, for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him so God demonstrated his love to the whole world to all of the world in that whilst we were sinners whilst we've all done wrong you know and we have all done wrong and um, God sent his one and only son to die for us as an atoning sacrifice which means that basically it's like a payment for our sin uh, Jesus Christ he you know his blood was shed on that crucifixion cross we actually killed Jesus Christ you know humanity the very thing that God created killed uh, God's son on a cross and um, you know God and Jesus they were both in agreement they wanted that to happen because Jesus's blood on the cross uh, was a payment for our sin um, and that's just how loving God is you know I haven't I haven't had a son, but uh, I wouldn't want to give my son's blood for the, um, you know, to pay off all of the sin of the world. And not that it would be a sufficient payment, because we need an infinite, holy, pure payment to pay off the amount of sin that we've got in our lives as as a as a world, you know, as humanity. We've built up so much of a debt of sin, 
uh, but Jesus Christ's blood on the cross is the more than sufficient payment because you know God is holy and he's perfect he's infinitely perfect and therefore the sacrifice was infinitely perfect for us as well and in verse 12 it says by one man sinted, sin entered into the world and this is Adam you know he rebelled in the um, in the garden of Eden God said to him don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and he did eat you know and um, so he rebelled against God he he was actually told but um, he had the knowledge of good and evil and you know this knowledge of good and evil has been sort of uh, passed down through the generations we all know the difference between right and wrong and we've all rebelled against God so I can't really blame Adam because we've all done wrong you know um, but by one man that is Adam sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law now this verse is saying you know that sin was here before the law but the law if you're not you know if you're under the law then you can sin because you break the law and therefore you sin because sin is transgression of the law but if you're not under the law or there is no law for you to break uh, because you, you don't have anything to do with the law then you can't sin uh, by breaking the law because you don't have any law imputed to your life and you know Romans is trying to tell us a lot of this it's trying to say look as a as a New Testament believing Christian you're not under the law you're under grace so you know the law doesn't even apply to us you can't break the law because as a Christian you're not under the law you know you're under um, there is a law you're under the law of Christ you know and uh, the Holy Spirit convicts us awakens our conscience to the things that we should do to live a righteous life and when we rebel against the Holy Spirit and our God-given conscience then um, you know if you identify that as sin if you recognize that as sin because it's obvious it's kind of um, you know you're convicted by it then you are sinning but you're not sinning by breaking the law because you're not under the law however if you start to follow the law you put yourself under the law and therefore you you know you're liable for um, you know you can commit sin because you're under the law but I'm not under the law and I'm not a law transgressor I don't transgress the law I'm not a man of lawlessness because I'm not under the law I can't break the law because it's nothing to do with me so in verse 17 it says for if by one man's offence death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ so Adam brought death you know he sinned he brought death we've all sinned we're all bringing death to ourself but Adam is the one man that brought death you know he's the first guy that sinned but Jesus Christ is the guy that brings us righteousness and eternal life you know by one all have died but by one all can live and um, we just need to follow Jesus Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior and it continues verse 18 therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification for life so again it's a free gift it's not something that you have to earn and it gives you complete justification uh, for life so we can have eternal life because we're justified through Jesus Christ Jesus Christ's blood is more than sufficient to make us justified before God our Father so when we die and stand before him at judgment you know when he looks at us he doesn't see any sin on our account because it's all been paid off by his son Jesus Christ's sin so when he looks at us he doesn't see our own righteousness he sees the righteousness of Jesus imputed to our life and therefore we become holy as our Heavenly Father is holy and we can go straight to heaven and I've said this so many times you know on these videos I've said the gospel so many times that it's a free gift from God all you need to do is accept it in prayer and say you know Lord I'm sorry 
please forgive me. I want to be a, your child. I want to be a child of God. Please lead me into truth. And um, you know, I don't want to do the things that I've done wrong in the past. Uh, you know, I believe that you died for me to pay off all of my sin, and that you rose again on the third day. And it's very important that we know that he rose again on the third day because that is our hope for the future. Because if Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead, then the sacrifice wasn't justified. You know, he wasn't glorified. God was not uh, happy with his uh, sacrifice. And therefore we have no hope because Jesus Christ is like the first fruit. He's the uh, first fruit means like the... Um, the first, um, I suppose, like if you've got a crop in a field and there's a plant growing, it's like um, the first crop that you receive. He's the first example of the uh, resurrection harvest for God, if you want. So he, he sort of led the way and he's shown as an example of what will happen in the future. So we can look forward to that. That's our hope. It's my hope. When I die, I'm going to raise like Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to receive a, um, a spiritual body like he received the spiritual body. So it says here that um, in verse 20, Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. So because Jesus is infinitely holy, you know, although we sin, our sin is like really really bad because um, we're actually rebelling against God and God is infinitely holy so we deserve a large punishment the only small sin that we do because we're actually rebelling against God um, but God's payment you know um, God on the cross infinitely perfect infinitely holy you can't outdo uh, that payment so uh, we can be sure that we are forgiven through um, trusting in Jesus Christ. In verse 21, finally, that as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin have uh, reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So our righteousness, if we want to get our righteousness, it needs to be through Jesus Christ our Lord and the end product, the byproduct of that is eternal life and that's the promise of God, is eternal life for all that believe and trust in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you.